We're going to get started, so I'll turn it over to Mark or Zelfix to talk to about talk to us about USB drives being encrypted. Here you go. All right. So, how many of you guys have experience with Linux? All right. Awesome. Awesome. So I have a few. Uh, um, live DVDs here. If you have a laptop, you can uh, insert those and follow along. Um, it is going to go kind of fast-paced fast fast once I get started here. So in my GitLab there, um, I have all the syntax that I'm executing on my YouTube page. I have uh, everything that we're going over. So you can re replicate everything I'm doing here. I also have on my archive um, page all the videos as well. Um, there's a support channel in uh, Telegram. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Parrot Linux um, to execute everything. They have about 2,000 people in the room, and uh, the creator is there and answers questions. They have really good uh, support, um, a great community. So I'm a dual certified Linux administrator. Um, I just passed the 201 Linux engineer exam. Um, does anyone know what's going on in the background there? I'm curious. No one? All right, so I'm patch <laughs> that's uh, patching a Linux kernel with uh, GR security, which is uh, now gone uh, corporate, so unfortunately. But that was back in the day when you could patch it and you had a really hardened kernel, so. All right, so just a quick reminder <laughs> that the law is no substitute for morality. All right, so I have con uh, contributed a few things to uh, the Parrot uh, community. Um, I wrote a, a pretty good paper on uh, Tor and I2P, and that's on their, uh, on their website, as well as uh, I have a full draft that I wrote there, my lab page. Like I said, uh, the Parrot community is uh, really good. There's the um, Telegram channel. Um, I believe the IRC room uh, died off, same as the XMPP, so I believe they're just going over Telegram right now. All right, so first we're gonna go into wiping USB, formatting it with Parrot Linux, and then we're adding a persistent partition, we're gonna encrypt the partition, we're gonna add a nuke slot, we're gonna back up the binary, because what the kill slot does is you're able to, once you encrypt the partition, and you create a nuke slot, it makes the encrypted partition null and void. So it's better than wiping because they still have not found a way to actually retrieve the data once you uh, enable the kill slot. So basically you create a password for the, for the persistent partition, then you create a second password, and if anyone forces you to uh, put in your password against your will, you're able to execute the kill slot and the data is completely null and void but you can also make a binary backup of the headers. And that way, it, if you uh, kill it and then you want to retrieve it later on, you're able to do that. So I'm backing up the, the headers and I'm also encrypting it with OpenSSL. All right, so if you want a disk, there's the disks there. Um, I only created five because at CoinCon I created like 25 and only two people took a disk. So um, if you want to download it yourself, there's a full and light. My disks have been verified. They have GBG signatures. I verified the integrity and the hashes of all those DVDs. So if you want the, here's all the mirrors. Uh, my slides are also up on my GitLab. All right, so first we're wiping the USB drive. So if you're uh, unfamiliar with Linux, they have uh, device files, which is the dev directory. SDC3 is the third, uh, Drive. So right here, I'm using uh, DC3, DC3DD, which basically just writes zeros to the drive. Um, I have a video of this on YouTube if you want to follow along, but it's basically just one command. It's that first command there. So that wipes the drive. Um, so Parrot ISOs are hybrid images, which means that um, the partition table and the boot record and everything is already taken care of. All you have to do is DD the image into it. Um, I'm going to use uh, Rosa, which is a GUI, uh, makes it a lot easier. So here are all the different URLs. Um, like I said, my slides are all of my GitLab. I posted them in the Slack room. So if you want to um, 
go and retrieve them. They're there. All right, so I have a video, but really this is all it is. Um, right here, you choose the, the, ISO, the ISO, and then if you hit clear, it clears the drive's MBR, and then you hit write, it writes to the drive. It's, uh, there's the video if you want to follow along, but it's really only like five seconds. Really easy to do. All right, so now we're getting to the more fast-paced part. You're going to probably want to um, pull up the syntax because it's going to go kind of fast. And there's the, the, vi the video URL of what I'm doing here. So give me two seconds here so I can separate the screens. By the way, this is Parrot Linux right here. Um, I haven't done anything. I just wrote this. So. Um, All right, so this is what the syntax is going to look like. All right, is that on tab or something? Oops. All right, so this is the syntax file that's in the um, it's in my GitLab. So I'm going to play the video if you want to follow along. Like I said, it's going to go kind of fast. So, And if you want to see me afterwards, um, I can help you out, um, give you the syntax file, and kind of uh, direct you um, along. All right, here we go. Once that opens, there it goes. All right, so this here is um, a program called Disks. It just shows uh, all the different partitions. If you see the last partition there is what we're formatting. The, the second partition is the MBR. The first partition is the live instance. So when you insert the USB, um, it's going to be booting that into RAM. Um, it, it also has uh, UFI and uh, Grub. Um, classic kind of uh, booting. All right, so we're we're formatting the last partition there. So this is the the GUI interface. Um, there it's partitioned. I believe it has um, some sort of bug. So I also did the command line as well. So if you see here, I just formatted it with uh, ext4. Can everyone see this fine? Let me see if I can increase the brightness. One second. Um. Uh, brightness is 100%, so, all right, so, all right, so we just, we just formatted the partition with the XT4. Next thing we're doing, we're using a crypt setup, which encrypts that last partition with uh, Lux encryption, which is, uh, uh, I believe the default is AES-256. So I'm creating a password now. Creating the password. Now it's formatting. All right. All right. Now we're doing uh, the Lux open, which opens up the the partition. Is it encrypts it like a, um, a container? So it has an outside encryption, and basically we're all here now. We are formatting the inside of the container with ext4 partition. So the dev mapper area is what maps device files in uh, Linux. So we're also creating a uh, a label of persistence. This makes it so that you're able to start the USB in a live instance 
and it's able to open the encrypted partition on boot. So there, e, um, E2 label labels it as a persistence. Now we're making a directory in the mount directory with a parrot partition. Now we're mounting and binding the dev mapper, which maps uh, device files with a directory. Now we're seeing the status of the, uh, the container, of the, the Lux encrypted container. You see here now the cipher is AES256. All right, so this is um, a data Lux dump command. This dumps, uh, it shows the key slot. You see key slot zero is the, the password, the regular password container. So that's the first one. We're creating a key slot one which is going to be the kill slot. Now the next command shows uh, the device, and then the next one is the crypt tab, which shows the UUID of the crypt file, and then it shows the, the Lux UUID label. Now we're adding a nuke slot. So we create a password, this is gonna be a second password. So like I said, if anyone forces you to open it against your will, it's going to, um, you enter the second password, that enables the kill slot one. So the, the kill slot zero is, a, is the, the default. Kill slot one is going to be, or key slot one is gonna be your kill slot. So I just added a nuke slot. Now I'm going to, now you see the key slot one is enabled, which is gonna be your kill slot. So now, All right, so now we're making a backup of the Lux headers. Now, if you see here, I did a uh, ls, which shows all the files in the current directory. ls and then the, the file, and then file shows the file type and um, all the details about the file. You see here, it's a Lux encrypted file, and it shows the, the type of encryption it is, and it shows the file location. Here I'm using OpenSSL to encrypt the backup header with AES-256 CBC. Now we'll run an LS and you'll see there's two. There's the Lux header back and Lux header back encrypted. The encrypted is the, the file that was created with the uh, OpenSSL encryption. File and you can see uh, OpenSSL encrypted data with salted password. All right, so now we're running OpenSSL and we're decrypting the file, the Lux header backup file. LSing the directory, listing the directory. Now you see there's the file after decrypting it. that was about it um, let's see <laughs> can't remember if there was any more to the video or not all right now I'm copying the the syntax so I have a script with all the syntax and I'm copying it to the mount directory inside of the encrypted persist persistence that way if you ever need to reference it this is what it looks like so If you see here, partition, and then you see the second one here is the Lux encrypted persistence. Like I said, the, the, the encrypted persistence is like a container. So you have the second thing that's inside of the first one. So it encrypts basically the outside area and encapsulates the uh, persistence um, ext4 partition. So that's the mount area. Like I said, I copied um, the script that I wrote for this to that directory. That way, once you open up the encrypted persistence, um, after you live boot, um, it's there. So you have all the syntax. Now I'm unmounting that directory. Then I'm closing the Lux um, partition with crypt setup. Now you see there's only um, one thing there. It's locked. So I unmounted it and I locked it. 
So, like I said, this kind of went kind of fast. If anyone's not used to Linux, um, you can see how they could be easily um, lost. So, any questions? All right. So I I put um, I put the syntax um, URL in the Slack room as well as the YouTube URL. It has everything that I went over as well as uh, I have an archive.org uh, URL with everything. Um, feel free to take any DVDs. Um, I guess that's it, unless anyone has any questions. Thank you very much. A short break, then we're going to wrap up with the results of the CT mini CTF and uh, close it down. So five minutes, we'll wrap it up.